Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a very tiny smartphone. This is the Jelly 2 from Unihertz. It is an Android smartphone that is fully functional, but is in a very tiny package. And we're going to take a closer look at what this phone is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the phone with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this tiny smartphone is all about. Now the price point on this is just over $200. They sell this fully unlocked and on their product page it says it works with AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile here in the US. Although on AT&T, a few Amazon reviewers have said they had to jump through a few extra hoops to get it activated. Uh, so just be aware of that. And this is, for all intents and purposes, a fully featured Android smartphone. It has a three inch screen. It's running at an 854 by 480 resolution. That's a very low res display, but when it's packed into something so tiny, it actually looks pretty good. The weight on this is about 3.8 ounces or 107 grams. And it feels really well put together. The front display here, it feels like Gorilla Glass. It's got a nice heavy feel to it. It's got a metal case here, which is very shiny and does pick up a lot of fingerprints, but it feels like something more premium than what you might expect from a brand you probably haven't heard of before. We've looked at these phones from Unihertz in the past and they make these really cool little niche phones like this. And this is their latest iteration here. Now you've got your standard Android controls on the front here along with your touch display. You have a handset speaker here. Phone calls actually sound really decent on this both through the speaker and the handset. And of course it's Bluetooth compatible so you can hook up uh, Bluetooth uh, headphones and headsets if you want. On the side here you've got a volume rocker. On the other side you have a special button that you can assign to do different things. I've assigned mine to load up YouTube when I push the button down, but you can go into the software and configure it to do other things if you want. This is your power switch here. Now also on the right hand side, you have a USB type C port for charging. Note though that this port uh, doesn't do video output, but you can plug in USB memory sticks and that sort of thing. So it supports charging and USB OTG. Now you can put two SIM cards in this or you can do one SIM card and a micro SD card. So you can expand uh, the storage that's built into the phone if you want. And then on the back here, you have a fingerprint reader, a flash for the camera and the camera itself. There's a camera on the back here and one on the front and we'll get to the camera quality in a few minutes. And believe it or not, this thing actually has a headphone jack here at the top. That's becoming a rare feature these days on smartphones. And remember, a lot of these manufacturers said these things take up a lot of internal room, yet somehow they managed to fit a headphone jack into this phone. And of course, you've got the Bluetooth capabilities on it as well. It's actually got decent specs for its size. This is running with a MediaTek Helio P60 processor. It's not a flagship processor by any stretch, but it's more than adequate for the things you might do on this phone. It has six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, given that this is a small phone, it has a small battery. So you do need to know the battery life is not going to rival that of a larger phone. So you're gonna get maybe about five hours of steady usage out of it if you're doing email or watching movies or something. Uh, you'll get more if you're kind of using it as an occasional notification device on standby. So if you're waiting for calls or waiting for texts and only occasionally turning it on, uh, you could definitely get through a workday. It does not support 5G, so that'll help the battery situation a little bit. But for the most part, uh, this will not rival a regular smartphone for all day battery life. But you can get there if you don't use it all that often. Now, surprisingly, this is a more usable phone than you might think. The keyboard, of course, is a bit frustrating given its size. Uh, so for example, I can try to type out testing here. I have found that the keyboard is really good at predicting what you're trying to land on. So for the most part, you'll be kind of surprised that things that you're intending to type actually come out, especially given that my thumb covers half the keyboard here. So I can even write out my 
name here if I type carefully. And then sometimes the autocorrect might have to come in to correct things. So it's not perfect, but I was surprised I could type as well as I could. And then, of course, you can use your dictation or something like that if you wanted to. Now, the phone is running Android 10 at the time I'm recording this video. It got its last update in May of 2021, and that is what it's got for the current security level. Most of the Android apps that you might run will be installable on this, even though the screen is really tiny here. But it performs really well at doing basic tasks like browsing the web, for example. As you can see, things are very squished here because of the small screen, but you do have the option for landscape to give you a little bit more room maybe. So it's something that I think you can use probably for texting and checking up on email and stuff. It might be a little bit harder to browse a modern website on this, but many sites are good at getting themselves oriented properly for all sorts of different screen sizes. Now I did find the phone does a very nice job of playing back video even though it has a tiny screen. So let's pull up YouTube here with my special button push and I've got my uh, YouTube channel here running right now. And you can see that it's very small when you've got it in this orientation through the YouTube app, but if I just tilt it this way, it goes full screen. And even though it's still on a very small three inch display, it actually doesn't look that bad. Uh, the colors are great, the frame rates are fine on this, it can keep up with 60 frames per second video, so I think it's a really good way to consume media provided you've got a power source nearby if you plan on watching a couple of movies or something. So if you're you know, looking for something small that can play back some of your favorite YouTube channels or Netflix videos, this might be worth looking into. And of course, Netflix supports downloading videos, so you can load it up with some stuff before a flight, even on its SD card, and have something very tiny that you can use to watch that media on a plane. And then you've got the Google Play Store for tracking down other apps. We're gonna take a look at games on this in a second, but I did wanna talk about the cameras on this. The cameras here, as you might expect, are not great. You've got a rear camera here that on paper sounds pretty good at 16 megapixels. It'll shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second, but unfortunately, this is what the video looks like. It looks terrible. It has a hard time stabilizing and even focusing. Uh, so once you get in close to something, it looks a little bit better, but the uh, video is not great on this rear camera, uh, nor are the photos that come out of it either. Here's a couple of photos that I shot earlier on it. As you can see, it just doesn't rival that of what you might get out of a larger smartphone with a better camera system. But it's got a camera if you need it, so that's something to consider. The front camera is an 8 megapixel camera. It'll do 720p video. Uh, this is what I shot with it a little bit earlier. It's passable. It's probably fine for doing a face-to-face -face conversation or a Zoom call. I wouldn't say it's better than uh, some of the other smartphones we've looked at recently, but it's usable. And I think that's what's kind of neat about this device is that you can do everything you can do on a larger phone in a much smaller form factor. Now, surprisingly, this does a pretty decent job playing games. We've got Call of Duty Mobile running on it right now. And although it's a little hard sometimes to control with this tiny screen, the frame rates here are actually pretty good on this. So this game runs pretty well. We also uh, loaded up Crossy Road a little bit earlier and that one seems to be doing pretty well too. So I think if you're playing some of the casual games that you're used to seeing on Android phones that are larger, uh, this one is actually going to run quite well. And it's going to do that because it has a very low res screen compared to some of the other phones that are out there. So a lot of times a phone with this processor will have a 1080p display where this one is essentially 480p. So the games will run faster on this because of the lower resolution display. And on the 3 d Mark Wildlife Benchmark Test, we got a score of 641, or 3.8 frames per second. That is a very low score compared to some of the other phones that we've looked at. But remember, this little phone is not rendering to a high-res display. It's a tiny 3-inch screen here. And you saw a lot of the games that we ran on it actually ran quite well despite the low-powered processor. And overall, I think it's a pretty nice little device. It is capable. It can run most of the Android app library. Certainly the most popular apps run on here without any issues. And I think for someone looking for a minimal smartphone that's really small and compact, this might be worth taking a look at, maybe as a secondary phone, but for some folks, maybe as a primary phone. And it's funny, over the years, phones have gotten bigger and bigger. And this one kind of returns us to a time where phone manufacturers were trying to get things to work in this small of a footprint. 
I had an old Motorola phone called the V8160 Vader, and it was about this size. It was a little flip phone. So I really like this form factor. Probably not practical for me, but I think it might be something of interest to some of you watching. So that's going to do it for the Unihertz Jelly 2. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.